Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 55. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 6, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the sheet Income Tax Withholdings. So this chapter is about payroll and one of the deductions an employer has to calculate for you and deduct from your check is federal income tax. So the idea is federal income tax is pay as you go. So every paycheck you have to pay some of your federal income taxes. At the end of the year you file your tax return and the exact amount owed will be calculated. So if your deductions throughout the year are add up to be more than you owe, you get a refund. If it's less, then you owe some money. The employer then or has the employee fill out the W-4 form, Employees Withholding Allowance Certificate. And in large part, what determines whether you get a refund or have to pay something is your total number of allowances. So if you're married and have two kids, you would have f the number four here. So an allowance allows some of your earnings not to be taxed. So the more allowances you have, the less that is taxed. So if you put a zero here, it's not like you don't, uh, you know, if you're single, right, you don't put a zero here unless you want a refund or if the employer sees this, they're going to be taking out two taxes too much, right, for your federal income tax. Maybe you have some other income somewhere else that's not being taxed. So that's a way to make it up. Now, what you put on your W-4, if you have four people and you put a zero here, right, when it comes to your tax return, you still have to put your name, if you're married and have kids, your name, your wife's name, and your two kids' names, the number four. All right. So, in this video, we're going to see how to do the wage bracket method of calculating a deduction for a paycheck. In the next video, we'll see the percentage method. All right, I'm going to go over to the sheet wage bracket. Now, wage bracket is just straightforward, simple. All you're doing is looking in a table and finding the amount. Now, what happens is <laughs> you, if you're single or married or there's other categories, um, that you could have here also. There's also the potential of having weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, monthly, quarterly. So there's all sorts of tables that you uh, might have to look up in, especially if you have you know lots of employees. I have four tables here on this sheet. So there's single person for weekly, a married weekly, uh, a uh, single monthly, that means you're paid every month, and then a married monthly. right? And each one of these tables, and the key is, well, let's just look here. So the employee, we're going to look up the income tax withholding, it's called. That's the amount to be deducted and then sent off to the federal government. The person made 260 bucks. They're single, and they are paid weekly. So it's the single and weekly that determine which table to look up. Now let's look at this. We know it's 260. Along the left, it says at least, but less than. And so you have to translate these words into mathematical symbols. Well, what does at least mean? That means to get this row, the smallest number that could fit in this row is that number. Now let's read this one, but less than. If you say, but less than that, it means to fit on this row, the number has to be less than 240. Now, there are other ways and other types of wording you could have put up here, but this is a common one in tax tables. In fact, in our next, next video, we'll see a different way to write this. But reading it straight English and realizing that this is but less than. It means it has to be less than 240 to fit on this row. Now, um, well, let's look at our 260, right? So 260, you come down here, you find it. There's a two, wait, wait a second, there's a 260 there and there? What in the world? But remember, read the headings, right? At least, that means that's the smallest number it could be for this row is 250, and it has to be smaller than 260. So if it's exactly 260, boom, that's the row. Right? The smallest number it could be, and the number has to be less than this 270. All right, so that's how you pick the row. How do you pick the column? Well, you just look up number of allowances. So this person over here uh, put two. 
And so that's, it's the intersecting value. You come over here and you type a zero, you write a 0. Or if you're 1 and you have the table, you can go like that. Now there is a way to do lookup, but it's kind of beyond the scope of this class. You'd have to do a two-way lookup. I have lots of videos at YouTube if you search YouTube for uh, a two-way lookup. Now let's do another example here. I want to uh, still stay with single weekly, but I want to change. Let's say the earnings are, and for us, the tables in the book go from 2.30 up to 5.30, so I built these, but the real tables would have a much larger range, so I kind of put a little note here. All right, so we're just going to make up a number. This person made $412, and the allowances were 1. All right, so we come and we see the column here, and what is it? It's 212, so we come here. Okay, it's between those two. That's the smallest number that could fit in this row. It's 410. Has to be le less than 420. It is. So the value we want, that's the tax. For this paycheck, we would subtract 28 bucks for federal income tax withholdings. All right, so. Um, I'm going to go over and just look at a different one. How about married weekly with four, looking up 690 and 25 cents. So I'm going to go over to the married weekly. So here's the married weekly. I've got to look in the four allowances column, and I got to find that number. Oh yeah, it's between 690 and 700. So our exact number was what? 690.25. So 690, and so it's bigger. It's in between these two, and that's the intersecting value. So we'd come over here and put 11. Next one, if we have single monthly. Four withholding allowances and the monthly gross is 2,080. We got to go find the single monthly table. So we look on the single monthly table. There's the allowances. It's a straight lookup. Notice we our value is in between these two. It's got to be greater than or equal to that and less than that. So the intersecting value is 29. We come over here. Type in 29 and do a formula, point it over to there. And finally, on WB4, we have our married monthly table for $3,000 exactly. So we go over to our married monthly for allowances. Exactly 3000 So it's exactly equal to that. And to, to, to determine which row, it's got to be greater than or equal to that number there. It can be 3,000 or more, but less than that number. So the intersecting value is 49. So we come over here and we put 49. Now, in our next video, we'll go over to the sheet called PM1, and we'll see a slightly different method of calculating the deduction using the percentage method for federal withholdings. All right, see you next video.